So the last example showed how to multi-home to the same upstream provider. What we're going to do now is how we're going to multi-home to different upstream providers. Again, using two links from the end site to two different service providers. There are a few differences here. First off, we're going to use a public AS number. We have to use a public AS number because the end site is now going to appear on the global internet as its own entity. It is possible to use a private AS, but what will happen then is, bearing in mind the previous examples, the upstream providers are going to strip the private AS from the announcements to the internet, and it will appear as though the end site has originated their address space from two different autonomous systems. There's nothing technically wrong with that, but operationally it might be challenging, and there are even some operators out there who don't really like this appearance of this inconsistent origin AS. Address space used could come from both upstreams, but more likely and more commonly it will come from the regional internet registry. Technically, multi-homing with address space from both upstreams will work just fine, but operationally it's next to impossible. Most upstream providers these days have specific requirements or policy in force, not permitting their end users or end customers from using the address space for anything else apart from connecting to their networks. So the recommendation is very much, if you wish to multi-home between two different upstream providers, is to get independent address space from the regional internet registry. The configuration concepts we're going to look at are actually very similar to those used for two links to the same AS. And we'll look at some examples in a minute. First off, I want to just show you what the inconsistent AS looks like. So if you look at the diagram, we have two autonomous systems, AS200, AS210, with a common customer sitting at AS65534 who is multi-homing between those two operators. Now, of course, as I said earlier, we're stripping out the private AS from what goes to the internet. So it will appear as though the address space used by this end site is being originated by both AS200 and AS210. And there are many examples of this across the internet today. Several vendors will even have command line that shows you how to display those inconsistent autonomous systems. It's not bad to do this, and it's not illegal to do this, but a lot of people don't like it. And as I mentioned, there are more likely to be operational challenges in trying to make this work. So we're now going to look at two links to different ISPs and using one link as the primary and the other link as a backup only. So following the example we did earlier with the connection to the same upstream provider. If you look at the diagram, we've got AS100 connecting to AS110 and to AS120. And what we want to do is make AS110 the primary upstream provider for inbound and outbound traffic, and we want to make AS120 the backup for inbound and outbound traffic. So how do we configure this? Well, as before, we announce the slash 19 aggregate on each link. In fact, every example we do will always be announcing aggregates. The primary link to AS110 will make the standard announcement. The aggregate goes out, and the default route will come in from the upstream. The backup link will lengthen the AS path on the announcement of the aggregate by using the AS path prepend command. So when we take a view from the internet, we'll see a very long path through AS120 and a much shorter path through AS110. So this will make the AS120 path a backup. The default route we hear from AS120 will simply mark with a lower local preference to make it the backup path for outbound traffic. When one link fails, the announcement of the 19 aggregate via the other link ensures continued connectivity, as we've learned before. Let's look at a configuration example. 
So we're looking at router A, which is the connection to the primary upstream provider. We're announcing our aggregate. Prefix list aggregate out will send, send the aggregate out to the upstream. And we accept the default route from them. And that is all. It's a very simple configuration again. If we look at router B, again, we have the prefix list aggregate out, allowing the aggregate outbound. And we have another prefix list default in, allowing the default route inbound. But in addition, we have two route maps. We have one route map, AS120 prepend, which will do the AS path prepend outbound. And we have another route map, LP low, which will do the setting of the low local pref inbound. Let's look at the two route maps. As you can see in the example, route map AS120 prepend has added three more instances of AS100 to the AS path. So if we go to AS120, we'll actually see the aggregate coming from this network with four of AS100 in the AS path. So it's a much longer AS path than if we sat in AS110 and looked at the prefix announcement. For the inbound default, all we're doing is setting the local preference to 80. So AS100 will see two default routes, one with a local pref 100, and the other one with a local pref 80. And the latter is lower, which makes it the backup path. Now, this is not a common situation, as most sites tend to prefer to use whatever capacity they have. But this can be used when maybe two competing ISPs agree to provide mutual backup to each other. Ordinarily, they don't want their traffic to go through the competitor. But if the main link to the internet fails, then they can get backup through their competitor or neighboring provider. But what it does show is the basic concept of how to use local preference and AS path prepends for traffic engineering in particular directions. AS path prepend is commonly used on the internet today to make an incoming path through an operator look much longer than it really is.